Hi all. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at using some of the sanders, the hand sanders here at New Haven. Um, so we'll just start from the left and, and move over. This is a Nikita random orbital sander. What that means is that it's not just spinning, it's actually moving and vibrating in all sorts of directions. The idea there is that when you're sanding a piece of wood, in general, it will leave scratches if you don't go with the grain. So you want to be going in the same direction as the grain optimally, but if you were just spinning in a circle, it will leave circle marks. So the solution here is it just does little movements in every direction, which all together don't leave that much of a mark on the surface of your wood. Uh, this is usually my go-to hand sander um, for a few reasons. One, it doesn't leave marks. Two, it can remove a lot of wood. And three, putting the sanding pads on is very easy. The pads are backed with Velcro, so the fuzzy part sticks right on here and just sticks right on so that you um, have it immediately. You don't need to cut the sheets to size and fold them on, so it's really easy. All you need to do is align the holes with the vacuum holes here so that the dust can be extracted. That's important because if you don't do that, then the dust just builds up in your sandpaper uh, and, and ruins the paper pretty quickly. So talking about sandpaper quickly, um, the uh, idea with sandpaper is the lower the number, the grittier it is or the, the more rough it is. So here we have a 60 grit pad. And what that means is that it's very rough. It'll remove a whole bunch of wood very quickly, but it'll leave marks in the wood. So if you were doing something really fine, you wouldn't want to use this for your final pass because it'll leave your wood pretty rough. So you would take out the biggest dents and, and marks and glue patches with this, and then you would progress to an 80 grit pad, 120, and as high as you want it to go for as smooth a finish as you want it. It's important to move progressively through sandpaper and not jump numbers. So if I were to say start with this 60 grit pad and then progress right to 150, it would take me a really long time with that 150 grit pad to remove all the scratch marks from the 60. So that's why it's important to, to move progressively. In terms of the pads, they're very disposable. So unless you've really only just done the lightest pass and it looks pretty much brand new, uh, I recommend just throwing them out when you're done. Um, at the moment, Makehaven is supplying these pads. Uh, if it turns out that we are going through them really quickly, that may change, but for right now it's been okay. So just you know, be conservative when you're using them. Don't be throwing them out willy-nilly. Use them until they're, they're totally finished. Um, and then, uh, but, but don't go putting back used pads because no one really wants to, to start by using one that's already been partially used. This one has a whole bunch of holes, so you don't even need to bother about aligning it with the holes on the bottom here, uh, because it, it will line up naturally. But some of them, such as this style, have holes only in particular places. So you need to just do a careful job of aligning it. And what that looks like is putting it just like that, so that it's, the holes are lined up, and as it's sanding, the sawdust can go in here and get sucked out. So along those lines, the vacuum is located right underneath the table, so you don't need to go pulling a vacuum out for this purpose. You can plug the sander right into the power strip here, and the vacuum gets plugged in right into the 3D printed adapter on the back. Each of the sanders has an adapter, so you can just plug it right in. Uh, there is a switch right on the vacuum here, there's also a speed setting on the back of the sander. So you can set it all the way from one up to five, with five being the fastest and most aggressive sanding, and one being the, the slowest and most gentle. In general, it's good to start in the middle and adjust up and, or down depending on your need. When you're holding it, there are a few positions and you can adjust your hands if they get tired. You can hold it right on top like a palm sander. You can hold it more aggressively like this with two hands. Um, and then also, if you're standing for a while, something that's useful is you can pull the trigger and then push this button in, and that will hold the trigger in for you. So you can move your hands around and not worry about pull, uh, holding the trigger down. So when you're using it, you don't need to worry about going with the grain. Uh, you can apply a light pressure. You can do edges. You can either clamp your piece down or do it freehand. Um, uh, there, there isn't too much technique, but again, you know, it doesn't really 
matter a whole lot which direction you go in because it's moving randomly. You also don't need to move really fast because um, it's it's doing the sanding for you. you. You don't you don't need to add any additional sanding speed to it. So I'll just demonstrate quickly. <clears throat> uh, one thing I will mention though is this does a pretty good job of dust extraction. However, there are times where it's producing more dust than the vacuum can collect. So this might be a time where you should consider uh, wearing a dust mask. You have them over on the safety columns. You can wear a mask or a respirator. Uh, if it's producing more dust, you can also activate the air filters hanging from the ceiling using the remote control next to the band saws. And that will help to filter out the air um, to, keep it, to keep it clean. Right now, I'm only doing a little bit of sanding, so I, I won't be doing either of those, but just know that those are options. So first, I'm going to flip on the vacuum. It's hard to see even with the naked eye, uh, but, but they're there. So that's all there is to the random orbital sander. When you're done, as with all the tools, just plug it and put it back in the zone. The next uh, tool we're going to go to is a hand belt sander. So with this tool, the, it's actually, it, it has a belt that's spinning. So it is quite important that you go with the grain with this tool because it's spinning in one direction, uh, not in every direction. So if you were to go counter to the grain, the, the streak marks would be very apparent. When you go with the grain, they're pretty well hidden. Um, for changing the belt, there's a lever on the side. So you pull the lever and that takes the tension off the belt. Then you can slide it off and replace it. So just as with the random orbital sander, all the belts for this belt sander right underneath it. Same idea with the grids. You start with the lowest number you need and work your way up. On the insides of the belts are arrows showing you which direction that the belt spins in. That's important because if you put it the wrong way, it can rip open the belt. So we're going to put the belt on. It says it wants to spin this direction. And so knowing that the belt is going to spin this way, I'm going to put the belt on just like that. There are also arrows on the side here to show you which direction the belt spins in. So you just need to get it approximately on there and then close the tensioner. And then what we're going to do is turn it on and see where the belt <coughs> excuse me, lands. Uh, what can happen if you put a new belt on is that it rides to one side or the other. And the way you're going to fix that is with this adjustment. So this is going to tilt that front wheel just a little bit to help it ride uh, right in the middle. Um, so right in the middle is where you want it if you are doing, if you're sanding a surface, if you're getting right up to a corner though, sometimes you want to edge the belt right over to the edge so you can get up in a corner or, or to an edge. And so that is another time when you might use this adjustment. Um, there's also a trigger lock on this that's pretty well hidden, but you pull the trigger and then push the trigger lock. And so that keeps it right uh, in there so that it keeps sanding. Oftentimes you'll find yourself sanding for a long time with the belt sander, so this can be helpful. Um, and with this tool, you, you also probably want two hands on it. It's a fairly powerful tool, and you want to make sure that you are holding onto it firmly. Another thing to note is you don't want to rock side to side, because then the edges will gouge into your piece. So it's very important to keep it quite flat on your surface and, and move with the grain. Uh, you can move side to side as long as the belt is spinning in the direction of the grain. Um, the, uh, there aren't too many other things to note. Again, the vacuum attaches right in here and um, 
And that's, that's really all that there is to it. Again, it is one of the more powerful sanders. So, so definitely hold on, hold on tight and, and be, um, be cognizant of, of its power. A fun fact is that people sometimes hold belt sander races where they take their, their flooring belt sanders and line them up and race them down a little alleyway. So in this little compartment are rasps and files. A rasp is a file for wood, so that has really heavy, sharp teeth for taking off wood. So it's used for shaping wood in various ways. So this is a flat one. Uh, rasps, as well as files, are all, all cut while you're pushing, so it doesn't do anything while you're pulling. It's only on the push that it's cutting, same as, as American hand saws. Um, so this you could use for taking off corners, for shaping wood. There are a few others. This one has a slightly rounded face to it. Uh, there are some small ones, uh, some bigger ones. There's, here's a, another a small shape that can be used for getting into small corners and making uh, various radii. There is this tool, uh, which is a, a, a rasp of sorts that you can use to take off material. It leaves a very rough finish, as, as all the rasps do, but it can be used for shaping and, and taking off a lot of material at once. Um, and the last tool that's particularly different in here is, is this. So this is a block of, of natural rubber, and what it's used for is taking the sawdust out of sandpaper. So on a belt sander, or, or any of these electric sanders, the dust, the, pulp, the, the surface of the sandpaper gets clogged up with dust, and what you can do is when it's running, just run this along the surface on the belt sander or the random orbital, and it will help to just pretty magically take the sawdust right out of the surface. So this is a very valuable tool. Moving on, we have a finishing sander. Um, this sander also moves in a, in a somewhat random pattern, but instead of having the pads that just Velcro right on, you take a sheet of sandpaper, cut it to shape, rip it to shape, and then clamp it on. So the way this works is it has these little tabs, and these tabs just lift right up so that you can take the sandpaper and slide it underneath and then lock down on the tab, same on the other side. Um, and with, in this way, you can take various sandpapers, put them on. Um, it offers a, you know, potentially some benefits over the random orbital sander. It can get right along an edge because it's a square shape. You can extend it over a side to get into corners. Um, but it's just an alternative and I'm just going to take this sandpaper off because it's pretty well used so the next person can figure out what grip they want on there. And underneath that sander we have just the, the free, the just sheets of sandpaper and the way these work is, is they're organized by the grit. The top shelf is for full sheets, the bottom shelf is for sheets that have had pieces ripped out of them. Um, so, the, again, the policy at Makehaven is that we provide this uh, because when we buy it in bulk, we can, we can get a pretty good rate, but do be considerate uh, of this and, and of others and, and only take what you need. Um, but, by the same token, don't uh, put back used sandpaper. So something like this should just be thrown in the trash because no one's going to take this and, and, and try to get any more, anything more out of it. So once you use the sandpaper, it's, it's a piece of sandpaper, it's pretty much done. Um, and it looks like it's getting about time for us to restock the sandpaper here. And here are homes for future sanders. Um, and as with all the tools, when you're done sanding, this vacuum will probably not have gotten everything, so you're just going to grab the, uh, one of the vacuums that's floating around and, and just vacuum up uh, everything that's left. And one additional note is that if you have used the air filters hanging from the ceiling, you can push the timer button on it and that will let it run for you know, two hours or four hours after you've left, just to make sure that all the air, all the dust is cleared out of the air after you've left and that's just sort of considerate to people coming after you. Thanks for watching.